Hey there, uh, David Mason with the UFO I team. I am here at Lake Keechulis in Washington State. Uh, Lake Keechulis is a few miles east of the Snoqualmie Summit. And I'm here tonight to do a sky watch uh, to look for UFOs uh, using this equipment. Um, I'm hoping it'll clear up a little more, then I will contact other members of the team to come out and join me on the sky watch. Now the equipment we'll be using tonight is not your run-of-the-mill equipment. We have several pairs of thermal imaging cameras. Uh, these are industrial grade. Uh, they, believe it or not, they were 50,000 a piece uh, back in their day. I've got several pairs of PBS-7D night vision goggles, uh, military grade with Gen 3 plus image intensifiers, uh, PBS-5Cs with Gen 2 and a half. I've got several pairs of Fujinin binoculars, uh, a pair of binoculars in which I added a uh, photodiode circuit to convert modulated light to sound. Uh, there is a demo video of these binoculars that I've posted that you can see if you want to see more about them. And I've also brought a couple pairs of large binoculars. Uh, these are called the Big Eyes. They just ex offer spectacular views of the night sky. And I brought an 8-inch uh, Mead telescope. I didn't have room to bring the big 12-inch. Um, oh, there's a picture of it I'll show you. And, Um, anyway, I'm hoping we will have a clear uh, sky tonight, and if it clears up more, I will contact other UFOI team members to come out here and join me in this sky watch, and hopefully to capture some UFOs. Now, what brings me here was 10 years ago, I was out here with another fellow astronomer, and uh, I witnessed an orb object hovering above the ground close to where I'm standing, and it was only a couple feet above the ground, it was soccer ball sized, at glowing a slight greenish hue, moved very fast. I couldn't believe what I saw, um, and immediately I panned around with night vision goggles to see if somebody had shown a flashlight or done something to create this uh, illusion. There's, and there was nobody in sight at the time. We were the only astronomers out here. And so that captivated me. And then going forward, another uh, a year ago, I uh, was out here with another investigator, and I set up a couple thermal cameras uh, and I recorded an orb object that measured very cold in temperature and recorded it in two separate thermal cameras. Uh, and it couldn't have been a balloon, it was measured very cold in the minus temperatures. Um, it's just very strange that this object that it traversed the sky and it uh, was not picked up by other conventional cameras or with just conventional night vision equipment. Um, so very anomalous as to what that is. So tonight we're going to see if this uh, sky gets any better and then we'll conduct a sky watch and we'll let you know and see what happens. So here is the uh, thermal camera video I took last year of the orb object. As you can see it's very cold in temperature when you compare that color of that object to the color bar graph at the right. Now that's the uh, calibrated temperature span. Uh, and these, both of these cameras were NIST calibrated uh, to uh, black box standard, uh, that I have that at my own calibration lab. And uh, my company, um, uh, we were a contractor to a uh, thermal camera manufacturer and I'm um, very familiar with how to run uh, thermal camera for thermography training. I've even re-engineered a thermal camera to have some other functions to uh, the uh, conventional capabilities. So uh, it's not a case of misinterpreting the data or not knowing how to run a thermal camera. And uh, so this is a very unusual object. It was very cold in temperature and it could not have been a balloon. If that were a balloon floating above the cameras, it would have been rendered white hot. Uh, it would not have been rendered a temperature of, of a Midas temperature of, of below minus 30 Fahrenheit, which is what we were getting on this object. And so it's a very strange phenomenon. Um, now we didn't see this thing with our eyes. I was with another investigator at the time and uh, there was no recordings of this object with conventional cameras. I had night vision goggles. Uh, most of the time I was looking up at the sky, I did not see this object when it uh, transited the field of view of both cameras. And so the cameras were set to automatic mode. They were spanning their temperature span to uh, what was giving the, uh, the greatest contrast and capability of the camera. So very interesting phenomenon here um, that cannot be explained using a conventional uh, technology that, as we know it. So here's the gear that we'll be using tonight. Uh, it's an assortment of uh, binoculars, uh, 
night vision goggles, and uh, there's the assortment of thermal imaging cameras, and uh, hopefully it'll clear up tonight. So here's what we've got. Uh, we've got a few clouds. Uh, there's the big um, binoculars. These are the um, PNB-1 Russian-made uh, giant border guard binoculars. They're a favorite of mine right now. And then here's the uh, Mayachi uh, giant binoculars. And then there's the uh, telescope. And uh, hopefully we'll get uh, clearer skies. It's looking clear, but the clouds are rolling in. So it may not be a clear night for us tonight. So uh, it looks like uh, we have overcast uh, coming in. I, I've looked at the satellite imagery and it's only going to get worse. So I'm going to call it a night. So I'm going to sign off here and be back here another time uh, doing a sky watch for the UFOI team.